Hello, I'm Avery or Hazel or Kylie. You can just pick one, I don't care. Hello, I am Lily. And I'm ready, depression. I'm ready, depression. <laughs> oh, God. Yes. I'm never ready. <laughs> yeah, uh, so hello and welcome to uh, From the Closet. Today we are covering the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. So obviously this movie will contain spoilers for the bleh, this, this episode. The, yeah, the movie will contain spoilers <laughs> for itself. The episode will contain spoilers for that movie. Um, you can join us. Wait, I have to spin the wheel to determine what you can join us tomorrow for. So uh, let me open up the wheel. And spinning and spinning and spinning and oh wow it's another t like it's another movie based on a TV show it's a uh, regular show no it's Phineas and Ferb across the second dimension damn we literally had before we picked this movie three and now only two and now one apparently so yeah you can. Well, no, there would still be two because um, we're replacing, like, Phineas and Ferb across the second dimension on the wheel is getting replaced oh, yeah. by... I almost the, forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah the other the movie. Disney Plus special. Um, but, yeah, uh, so you can join us tomorrow for Phineas and Ferb across the second dimension. You can join us next week for something, because uh, we don't know... Uh, Whatever is going to be on Monday, you can find out what that is tomorrow. Um, but on Tuesday, we'll be doing Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. So, look forward to yeah. that. Um, in the description below, you can find a link to Just Watch, where you will find all the places that you can rent, purchase, or stream this movie. Our links are centered around the U.S. version of the site. However, if you use the website, like, bleh, if you use the app, you can change the, bleh, good God, I am screwing this up. If you use the app, it will automatically redirect you to your country's page. And if you use the website, you'll be able to change the country from the website page. Also in the description is a link to our Patreon, where you can vote on future episodes of this show, as well as get access to episodes before they release as well as uh, access to episodes of our sister show, Off the Shelf, before they release. And that show is about books. Um, then also in the description is a link to Anchor.fm, which contains links to every platform this podcast is on, as well as our Instagram and Twitter, where you can get notified whenever we release a new episode. That should cover everything. Let's... Get into this movie now. Spoilers ahead. Bye. Spoilers bye -bye ahoy. Yeah, <laughs> good God. Spoilers ahoy. Bye-bye, non-spoiler people. All right. This movie is... Uh, okay, how do I put this? This movie is goofy. It's, uh... It's one of those movies where, like... It, it's full of jokes... And not all of the jokes land, but a good chunk of them do. And it's just yeah. like, it's just so goofy enough that you can't help but love it anyway, despite some of the humor that doesn't work. Look, if you're, if you're watching this movie seriously, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, it makes it a really weird mu movie to critique. Um... And people but we're going to do so anyway. Yeah. Um, and the way I see it, okay, for starters, I will, I will make the complaint about humor, some of the humor that doesn't quite land. A lot of it is butts. Like, that's it, just butts. Oh, yeah, like, with um, Patrick's underwear. <laughs> yeah, butts and underwear, those two things, really. Uh, and then there was also, like, like, okay, so, like, there was that scene where Patrick just flies over everybody's heads, 
completely naked. I'm pretty sure that would be illegal. Uh, <laughs> uh, very. I think it's called streaking. Yeah. It, well, you know, there's a lot of other illegal shit going on in this uh, in this movie, namely stealing from uh, the royalty, and then also stealing trade secrets. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have just... stealing. We have Grand Theft Auto, and then uh, repossession. Driving and without a license. No, you don't need a license to drive a sandwich. Sure. <laughs> I love that explanation. But, but yeah, um, I, I, I do. I, I, that that line's really only in there to reference uh, the episodes where SpongeBob fails his driving test. Uh, cause that's just like a lot of episodes. And to yeah, be fair, that's... his driving tests are often really absurd. Like yeah, you wouldn't. For somehow he is not a good driver unless he's piloting a sandwich. Yeah. A soggy sandwich. What would it be? Mustard or ketchup? Soggy mustard or ketchup. What? Yeah, it would be soggy mustard or soggy ketchup. Okay, then. Because it's all underwater. I, I don't get how that would be soggy. I don't think... Can liquid get soggy? Yes. I don't want to know that. Anyway... <laughs> But yeah, um, it, 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 the bleh. I can't, like I said before, I can't imagine a Krabby Patty actually tasting good because of underwater. <laughs> I mean, I guess when everyone's underwater, you just get used to it. But yeah, um, so the interesting thing that I find about this movie is that they constantly refer to SpongeBob and Patrick as kids. They're in their 30s. I mean... I, I'm pretty sure that... I, I'm pretty sure, like, that's correct. Hold on. Um, I, I'm actually going I to... I they were in their 20s. Uh, real quick, I'm just gonna Google Spongebob's canon age. Honestly... Does he even have a canon age? Does SpongeBob even have a canon? Y yes. I doubt it. I mean, so what do you find? Hold on. Wait. No. Okay, that's an episode set in the future. What, is it the Chrome episode? I have no idea. Mm hmm. Everything is made okay. out of Chrome. Okay, SpongeBob is 32, and Patrick is 34. Oh. So... But you see how they act. Yes. But to call them kids is the wrong term. The proper term would be Man child. I don't think anyone wants to have that, you know, anyone wants to say that. So I think kid is a more appropriate word. Not appropriate, I, I, um. Family friendly. <laughs> yeah. But it's an, it's the more accurate word. I feel like, um, like, they, they go the whole movie calling him a kid, and he even says he's a kid. Um, and it's just, it, it just strikes me as weird, knowing he's a lot older than... He, he's way past kid in terms of age. It's just maturity that's the issue. Well, I mean, there's also the other thing 
of, you know, he acts childish because he is, like, the show wants the younger viewers to personify him, uh, themselves as Spongebob. They want to put, you know, see themselves in Spongebob's shoes. Yeah, and see, that's the thing that, I don't know, it just makes me seem weird. Because, okay, we have a 32-year-old man who acts like a kid. Um, he goes, he basically, almost uh, very, very close to the start of the movie, he breaks into his neighbor's house and creeps into the shower with him. It's just SpongeBob things. I feel like the real question is, how is there a shower? Yeah, that's that's another issue. <laughs> there shouldn't be showers underwater. Also, I, I I will say that just before that, the joke where he put he takes out a toothbrush and then like he puts toothpaste on the toothbrush. And you think he's going to go brush his teeth and then he goes for his eyes. That's that's funny. <laughs> this is literally comedy gold. There are some, like I said, some jokes are funny. Uh, the I'm ready depression is kind of dark. I was like, oh, okay. Okay, then. Um, the, the entire scene at the Goofy Goober when they start eating the... You know, the shake, or the ice cream, I forgot what it's actually called, but that was hilarious. Yeah. And I feel like saying that they ate it is, um, very loose. Yeah, um, remind me that, uh, like, put like a reminder in the name of the audio when you go to export it to tell me to edit some shit out. Okay. But um anyway, uh regardless, I think uh I think like I like I said, some of this humor lands. I I really like everything to do with Mindy, but for some reason I don't feel like she was ever referenced in the show prior to this movie. If no. she was, I I'm I'm probably just tripping. No, um in fact, there's an entire theory about how, you know, the characters in this movie, Mindy and the King, are just actors for this movie. No, I swear in to God, universe, Neptune. This is a movie. No, like ne Neptune absolutely is in the show. Yeah, but he's never shown like this. This is the only time he looks like this. That that can't be right. No, he got a different appearance. Um, I, I literally only remember him looking like this, and even in the episode where like there was that whole thing about Triton, he looked like this. Um, I'm just looking something up. Um, I think we should talk about the music in this. Hold on, I, I do want to continue on about Mindy, because she's, a, she's okay. an interesting character, um, and, like, I really enjoy her role in this movie, because she, the joke at, at near the end, where she's, like, uh, where... Neptune and her arguing about how like she's stalling. It's uh it it's funny. I couldn't help but just picture like the cinema sends layout over that scene and just having them send <laughs> having them ma make the sin this goes on for some time. So you're saying I'm stalling. Stalling. And see, like, that's the kind of joke that I want out of CinemaSins videos, which is why they probably didn't make it. <laughs> I, I don't know. 
I, I'm going to have to go and check and see if they've even sent this movie. I mean, they should have covered this movie. It's such a, um, such a classic. And they've had two chances to push it out for, like, uh, popularity, I guess. Like, because um, there's been two other movies since, since then, so there would have been a period where this movie and content centered around it would have been popular. Does that make sense? Yeah. Also, yeah, look at the DMing I'm sending you, if you can. I can't. Okay. Well, I, um, after the episode, I sent you two different images. One of the movie um, King Neptune, and one of the show Neptune. The show Neptune is blue. King, um, this movie is actually green. But, uh, okay. But, um, yeah, regarding Mindy, I don't think she deserves an entire subreddit dedicated to hating on her. I'm sorry, wait, there's an entire subject dedicated on hating Mindy? Yeah, it's called r slash fuck, it's all, it's called r slash fuck Mindy. I mean, there's r slash fuck Nintendo. This is a... See, I was going for a joke, and clearly you're not getting it, because I, I don't know how you don't know about this already, but there's a uh, there's an NPC in Pokemon named Mindy who trades you um, a Pokemon that evolves by trade. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I and mean, I knew that, you know, all the Pokemon trades have the, um, what the stone that prevents you from evolving. No, I it's just, just the one. Why would... You know, I just didn't know the name. I don't memorize the NPC's names. We've literally talked about it in voice chat about how it's just this one NPC and how there's an entire subreddit dedicated to hating on her. Yeah, I do not remember talking about that recently. We've talked about it multiple times. Not recently. You have the memory of a goldfish, I swear. <laughs> Actually, okay. So, how many songs were in this movie? Like, I can two. only remember two. No, they, it, then... it was just two. <laughs> And then you have the credit song, which was well, not made for this movie, but I want to say it went in hand of making the movie a lot, not the movie, making the song okay. a lot more popular. I guess if you stretch, you can say four, because there's the SpongeBob SquarePants theme, there's the Goofy Goober theme song, there's Now That We're Men, which I actually have on my Spotify playlist, and then there's <laughs> Ocean Man. Which wasn't made for this movie. Yeah. Okay, I actually... I didn't count the Goofy Goober theme song. I actually forgot about that. Then what were you counting? Um, for the two, just the... Um, the, the song that Spongebob sings at the end of the movie. And... Uh, now that we're men... Didn't he sing the Goofy Goober theme song just in a more rockified version of it? That's what I was counting. And no, that the rockified version, that's his own song. No, it's not. Literally is. You might be able I'm to find... I'm a Goofy Goober, yeah. I'm a Goofy Goober, yeah. It's definitely different from... I'm a kid, you say, 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 say it again. And I say thanks. Thank you very much. Literally different lyrics. I literally Completely did not hear those lyrics and I just finished lyrics. watching the movie. It's a, um, the rock song where Spongebob turned everyone back. Yeah. I had just completely different. 
I don't know. I just watched the movie and I just remember it being a rock version of the Goofy Goober theme song and nothing else was different about it. I swear we're going to have after this, we're going to have to um, listen to that again. No, because I'm just going to go to bed. Damn. Still. Actually, I really loved the song at, um, at the end. I don't know why. It just it just rocks. <laughs> wow. Fun pun. Uh, you know, one of the other jokes that really landed for me was the uh, hmm. uh, after they managed to get through this pit full of monsters, uh, <laughs> SpongeBob says like something like, oh, we got through the pit of the horrifying monster creatures <laughs> and they they're all just they all just like get upset and walk away and he's like oh not you guys you guys are awesome <laughs> <laughs> hideous disgusting monsters that's what it was just yeah uh, this movie dennis, dennis was interesting and then there's like the whole thing with shell city which turns out is a gift shop. Um, so I don't know. I've heard, um, and this wasn't really even like a plot twist. Okay, there is something I've noticed. Why does this movie almost feels like it's paced like the Odyssey? Well, because it is. There's a lot of Odyssey par parallels. Um, That's why, yeah, I was going to talk to you about that, um, about the Odyssey cause like, parallels. Because, like, there was the Bag of Winds, uh, there was uh, the uh, weird ice cream lady, and the gigantic eel worm creature can be seen as, like, a Charybdis Scylla parallel. And then we have the Cyclops. Yeah. The Cyclops. Like, mm. you know what else we should mention? It, we should talk about. I really hope we're on the same subject. What else should we talk about? Uh, so, we covered another movie that has the exact same plot as this movie. Oh, I want to talk about David, David Hasselhoff. Anyway, <laughs> um, let's go with your idea. First. Yeah. So, you know what movie this is, right? We actually um, discussed it in that episode. How it had the same plot as this movie. I'm gonna be honest. I remember... Was it like Sinbad or something? It was Sinbad. Wow, my memory's better than I thought it was. Yeah. So, basically, in both movies, a character who basically everybody underestimates has to journey across the sea to retrieve a an artifact to basically save someone from being executed. Like, it, it, it's yeah. the same in both Sinbad and this movie. I can't even remember what the artifact was in Sinbad anymore. Um, Honestly, I don't really care to remember. So, I think one of the biggest... You know, key points of our comparison is which one's better. It's this movie. Yeah, it, it is this movie. Um, sorry, DreamWorks. You may have made dragons, but you don't always make good movies. Case in point, <laughs> Shrek the Third. And Sinbad. <laughs> and, and definitely Sinbad. Um, <laughs> so, this movie is ridiculous. It wants you to know it's ridiculous. Literally, while SpongeBob and Patrick were dying, it cuts to um, a movie theater full of pirates. Which they kind of set up at the beginning of the movie. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, and the, the weird thing was, like, I saw this movie on TV, like, a bunch of times. I didn't know mm -hmm. until much later that it was actually a theatrical release. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I was, um... I, I wish I went to see this in theaters. Well, I mean, that might have been kind of hard. Hmm. 
Why is that? When what year were you born again? Two thousand three. Yeah, you would have been one years old. Shit. Actually, probably not even then, because your birthday is like right at the end of the year. So yeah, you'd have been less than one year old uh, to go see so, this I movie mean, in theaters. If I did see it in theaters, I definitely wouldn't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I certainly didn't see it in theaters. Um, because, like I said, the first movie I saw in an actual theater was The Polar Express. Now, I saw Finding Damn, Nemo. I'm sorry. In a, I saw Finding Nemo at a drive in. So, there was that. Um, but tri drive ins totally count. But yeah, uh, I, I definitely, I don't know. I think I went and saw the second Spongebob movie in theaters, but I don't remember fucking anything about it. Hmm. So, this movie... I think I was setting this up before. This movie is completely ridiculous. Never to be taken serious ever. Case in point, just... David Hasselhoff appears. Why? Yeah. Because it's David Hasselhoff. Yeah, he appears, and he swims Spongebob and Patrick across the ocean, and then launches them into Bikini Bottom with the power of his pecs. This is something only Spongebob can come up with. Yeah, and I, and I guess that also means that David Hasselhoff canonically exists in the Spongebob universe. Oh, God. So, usually, stuff like this re amount of ridiculousness of just David Hasselhoff just randomly appearing out of nowhere, this would get flack, you know? But because of how ridiculous this movie is, it just works. Yeah, like, there's another movie, um, it's actually an MCU movie, where David Hasselhoff just appears out of nowhere, and, yeah... It, it, it was for a joke during a serious scene, and it got flack for that. Um, but I, I feel like it was a joke made... Um, I feel like because the way... Because of this movie or something? No. Um, how do I put it? I feel like in that movie, it's a joke made more by the writers at, rather than the characters making a joke the character who does this isn't joking but bleh, who cares uh we'll get to that when we yeah. get to it we're not there yet in the mcu i have no idea what avery's even talking about yeah but uh oh my god 2004 david hasselhoff looks a lot different than he does now <laughs> god i should see what he looks like now But yeah, uh, it you know there was that ridiculousness, but then also there was the ridiculousness of how just after SpongeBob and Patrick you know get incapacitated and literally are unable to move and completely dry up, it, we see their tears just straight up defy the laws of physics to bring them back to life. <laughs> There is a lot of broken laws of physics in that scene. Yeah. Yes, like, the for sprinklers one, go off, and literally everything comes back alive. Yeah. I mean, okay, so the sprinklers going off, that in itself kind of makes sense, because, like, the faucet... Sh the faucet? The socket shorted out and was smoking. So, yeah, it would trip the smoke detectors, which would cause the sprinklers to go off that in itself makes sense but how the tears manage to get there and actually cause a short in the socket that's weird because they were going down a sloped uh surface and then randomly they just start shooting off to the left <laughs> i mean and i they... feel like you're putting way too much logic onto this realistically their tears should have dried up, just like Spongebob and Patrick. 
yeah, there's that too. Um, the tears should have dried up. But like, I'm just trying to point out how ridiculous this is and how you can't really take this movie seriously. Because like, not only do they shoot off to the left, they start dr like they start traveling along this lamp cord, uh, which realistically gravity should cause them to fall, like the tears to just fall off of it. And they make it all the way to the wall socket where it just seeps its way in, almost looking like it's intentionally doing it, and causes the I mean, socket to short make a circuit. Heart, so maybe it's alive. <laughs> oh boy. And then the smoke goes up to the smoke uh, detectors, uh, sprinklers. Uh... Oh yeah. So. I don't know if you know this, if you put a sea creature under intense light and it dies, it, you know, it dries out, putting it back into water does not revive it or reanimate yeah. it. Yeah, but, like, this is also the same show where Spongebob discovers a tiny little string, starts pulling on it, and unravels the entire universe in five seconds. Ah, uh, the cool lagoon. <laughs> this, this is a wacky movie. Yeah, it, it it's whack, it's wild, um, and it actually has the charm that some of the early seasons of SpongeBob had. Um, and if I remember correctly, this was supposed to be SpongeBob's end. It was supposed to end on this movie. No, well, uh, that's complicated because season four was being worked on at the same time as this movie. From what I rem from what I've heard, weird because I've heard that um, Steven Hillenburg wanted this season to be the last. Like, um, like he wanted to end it on this movie. Well, from what I know, um, Steve, Steven Hillenburg was not involved with the season of the show that was being made at the same time as this movie. He was only involved with the movie. So I guess he wanted it to end, and Nickelodeon's like, <laughs> no. Yeah, what if we just didn't do that? I, I'm sorry, did you just say... And our cash cow? No. Yeah, and I mean, there's a lot of evident evidence that Nickelodeon doesn't really know how to just let a good thing end. Because, like, I mean, it's for starters, you have this show, which is the prime example. But let's not forget... They made Planet Sheen. <laughs> and the new Fairly Odd Parents series. <coughs> oh god, I hate. Oh, but and then I they also about, made Sam and Cat. What I hate about SpongeBob like the newest seasons of SpongeBob, they're making a bunch of spin-off shows which Steven Hillenburg specifically said he would never want to do and then he died oh. so nickelodeon said oh we can finally do it now see at least with the avatar stuff the creators are on board with it and they're the ones doing it with very little oversight from the network from what i've been seeing i mean considering that they have launched their own studio now and are planning to do theatrically released films um, set in the Avatar universe. Like, that's huge to me. But also, SpongeBob... um, at the end of this movie, I finally got the answer that's been plaguing me for my entire life. And what's it's that? Paramount, a Viacom company.
I mean, for the longest time, I never knew, like, was Nickelodeon owned by Paramount or Viacom? Regardless, guess like, Paramount. regardless, there's this weird, uh, there's this weird thing going on, um, hmm. with Nickelodeon now where, <sighs> okay, when I was a kid, Nickelodeon was a very well respected, I guess would be the right term for it, network for kids, uh, content. Um, mm-hmm. And now they can't even compete with Cartoon Network and Disney Channel anymore. And Cartoon this Network is sad. and Cartoon Network has been going down the shitter for a while. I mean, well, they were going down the shitter for a long time. I suppose maybe they're bring like they're bringing shit back, but there was a period of time where 50% of the content that aired on the network was Teen Titans Go. And they didn't even give regular show a proper send-off. Like, the finale aired, and then that was it. That was really sad. This, honestly, why is Disney Channel the one that's reigning supreme? I don't know, but it might have something to do with creators making just, like, independent creators making just banger content. Hmm. I I, I guess independent's not the right word. Individual creators. There we go. Individual's the better word. Oh my Um, god, but there's just this such a trash series on the Disney Channel, or I think Disney XD, where, um... They basically just take YouTube videos, you know, they do some censoring and whatnot, you know, put in like this nice comp- um, compilation, and they just put it straight up on YouTube. And they're like gaming YouTubers too, it's like Jack Oh, you mean straight on, Dan uh, you mean straight onto TV? Basically. Obviously, they yeah. have heavy amounts of editing to said videos. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah, that that sounds like a Disney XD thing. Um, I oh, what was it Ready Player or something? No, that's the movie. Anyway, I don't know, but regardless, it's a, it, it's weird to me that like, di- see, the sad thing is, Nickelodeon fucked up, um, and they fucked up bad. They I just, where uh, where did they fuck up? First, they were good, and then I don't really know where the first fuck-up was. <laughs> well, the first fuck-up was Dan Schneider. Because Dan Schneider was behind a lot of the most popular um, Nickelodeon shows. He was behind Drake and Josh, he was behind iCarly, Victorious, Sam and Cat... I think he was behind Zoe 101, and also apparently he was behind Good Burger. Um, (laughs) Yeah, that was a surprise to me when I found out later after we'd already covered it. But yeah, like, obviously, you know, he was very good at creating this content, but he was a horrible person. And... I don't blame Nickelodeon for firing him, but they never got really anyone who was even close to his skill level after that. And then later at some point, they had two shows that were pitched to them. This is probably their biggest fuck-up of all time. The two two shows, shows? The two shows that got pitched to Nickelodeon Mm-hmm. were Fanboy and Chum Chum hmm. and Adventure Time. No. No, wait. They Why turned... I... They turned down Adventure Time in favor of Fanboy and Chum Chum. <coughs> oh my god, I want... 
Most mom makes me puke in my mouth. Like we are way off topic. I just realized that Th this move. It, I guess the whole point we we're trying to make. This movie comes from an era of Nickelodeon where they felt more respectable, where they had much better content. Lots of people loved this movie. Lots of people loved the first three seasons of SpongeBob. Uh, people loved the Rugrats, Drake and Josh, iCarly, Victorious. Some people There's were okay reason. with Sam and Cat. There's reasons why people love this, you know, all of these stuff. These were well-made things, and now what Nickelodeon has prior- I don't even know what they're prioritizing, but it's not good. Yeah, the stuff that they're putting out now isn't entertaining. Not to the people who have- like, it, it's not entertaining either to the people who have a nostalgic connection to the network, and it's not entertaining for the kids of- the modern generations who would rather go and watch stuff on Cartoon Network or Disney Channel. Um, and, you know, we'll talk more about, like, Disney Channel's fuck-ups, because, like, they canceled a show that was very popular with one audience, but it wasn't their target audience, and they didn't notice that until later. Like, they didn't notice its popularity until much later. Hmm, it reminds me of Infinity Train. Infinity Train is just Warner Brothers being Warner Brothers. Well, that's actually kind of why they, um, apparently there was not a child entry point, but that wasn't, that's not the target audience. The target audience was young adult. Yeah, well then, it shouldn't have been on Cartoon Network for a while, and then they moved it to HBO Max, um, which it's is where it should have been. It. Yeah, it, it's where it should have been. Um, but then, like, I don't get their whole target, like, their whole child entry point complaint if it's an HBO Max exclusive, because who cares? Um, I don't think anyone got that um, argument. Yeah. So but, yeah, case in point, this movie comes from an era where Nickelodeon, would you say ran supreme? At least no, I wouldn't. Um, at the very least, very close tight um, to the competition. Yeah, I would say that they were above Cartoon Network, but were they above Disney Channel? During the yeah. height of Phineas and Ferb? Good point. Prob no, I, I, like, I, I'd say they were probably on par. They were neck and neck. And that, this... That I, I think we should go back to the movie, um, you know, before we end up, because... I mean, the characters in this movie are so good to their um you know tv show counterpart every new character is good um i can't like obviously you know there's flaws but i don't know this also, is I, a I feel like solid Plankton, movie. i feel like you'd have to um i, I kind of want to go through the first three seasons of Spongebob and see if there were actually 25 times where Plankton tried to steal the formula and if this was truly the 26th time. Probably not. Though I don't know how he has like all these plans ready and then just forgot about the letter Z. <laughs> and completely forgot what the contents of the plan were, too. Yeah. Like, who made... I mean, actually, you could convince me that uh, Karen made all those plans. Uh, that name didn't age well. Oh, it really didn't. Because, <laughs> like, if either one of them is the Karen, it's very clearly Plankton. <laughs> it is. God, Karen is... 
underutilized, actually. Also, just, you know, the fact that Mr. Krabs opens up a second restaurant right next door to the original that has the exact same stuff on the menu. Krusty Krab is Starbucks. God damn it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I can kind of see it if you're just, like, getting so many customers that you don't have room. That makes sense to me. But the thing that keeps coming to my brain is, like, if the Krusty Krab is so great, why isn't there a Krusty Krab too? <laughs> Oh my god, Avery. <laughs> well, now there is. Yeah. You know, someone tried to uh, actually say to me, if Tangled is so great, why do why isn't there a Tangled sequel? Um, because that would probably be a direct to DVD and suck. <laughs> well, there's that. But, like, it was in an argument about, like, Tangled versus Frozen... But um, you see the problem, though, right? There is a sequel. Yeah. It, <laughs> and we've covered it. And it's mm. pretty good. Not as good as Tangled. But hey, none of us are. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Such a... That's an interesting way of looking at it. <laughs> But yeah, um, I, I do enjoy this movie. Uh, hell, Sandy's even in it, which was kind of a surprise. Hmm. Sandy, Mrs. Puff. Uh, I feel like, you know, for a theatrical release, maybe you try to include as many characters as possible. Because, like, there's Larry. Um, interestingly, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are not in this movie. Yeah, I guess they just have better things that they want to do. But... For the most part, most of the um, characters have at least been shown. You know, you have Sandy, um, most of Mrs. the main fish. Yeah, Mrs. Puff, Larry the Lobster. I can't really I'm, think of any other major I'm characters. Sure, that... um, I mean, maybe um, Mr. Crab's daughter is there in somewhere. I can't remember, oh, yeah. but that just sounds Pearl. right. Pearl is there, yes. Okay, I couldn't remember. Yeah. On all fronts, for a theoretical release, theatrical. this is a really... Yeah, this is a really solid movie. Yeah. Of a show that was never meant to be taken seriously in the first place. You know, something interesting, until re-watching this movie, I had completely forgotten that SpongeBob's alarm clock, alarm clock had a foghorn sound effect. Hmm. Like, I'd completely forgotten that. Oh yeah, almost, we now even touched the beginning of this movie on how it's just I don't even know where to start with that dream sequence. I mean, it's just uh. A, a dream sequence. I don't really know what to say. Um, I don't know. It was actually kind of funny. Yeah. I also... Um, I also really love the uh, the bar scene. Hmm. It, I, I just found that one really funny. And how they have to go and steal the key. We don't know how to weed them out. <laughs> yeah. And they also like ha they, they go and have... They have to steal the key, um, which part of me feels like the battle for Muni was referencing this movie. Hmm. Where a big, f like, a fight breaks out between, like, it, in the battle for Muni, a fight breaks out between Ruberiot and Fool Duke, and in the commotion... Like they, like, they manage to escape and everything, and then suddenly there's the reveal, Fool Duke has the key. And in this movie, 
a fight breaks out, SpongeBob and Patrick get out, and then Patrick has the key. Somehow. So, Avery, when did you say that this episode, um, that this movie was in theaters? 2004. Star Wars of the Forces of Evil is a 2015 series. Yeah. And? Oh, wait. Star Wars of the Forces of Evil referenced this? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, sorry. I... My mind thought the opposite. I was like, uh, Avery? What? <laughs> I'm not an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah, that makes yeah, that makes much more sense. And something I never really thought about when I watched the Battle for Muni. Yeah, I never thought about it either because like frankly, I I I didn't remember that this fight breaks out and then suddenly Patrick has the key was not really an explanation of the not really an explanation given or there's no scene showing him getting the key there doesn't need to be but it's just a honestly it, that's this movie it's a lot of things happen without any explanation and we just go with it yeah like patrick then, has like, heels <laughs> oh but yeah like uh also, the fact that Patrick has a butt at all is weird. Huh. Same for SpongeBob. I mean, I don't really want Patrick to, um... I mean, Patrick having a mouth is weird in how he eats. Because really, he should be ejecting his entire stomach when he wants to eat a Krabby Patty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's... There, there's all kinds of, like, theories about how Bikini Bottom came to be and, like, how all the animals came to, you know, be sentient, including um, one involving atomic bomb testing. If I actually remember correctly, Stephen Hillenburg was a marine biologist. I was more referring to, like, a canonical explanation as to how... The yeah. uh, the fish becomes sentient. I'm I'm just pointing that out. Like the Goo Lagoon does have a logical explanation. How there's water in water. But regardless, I think that should probably just about do it for this movie. I mean, we've said a good chunk of what we wanted to about it. I think. And then also, I would agree, yeah. Yeah, and then also, like, vented our frustrations about Nickelodeon. Um, they've kind of become shit, and I'm really hoping that uh, the new Avatar content that's coming out doesn't suck. We will see, I guess. Yeah. We'll have to see. Uh, Viacom, you get a 0 out of 10. Uh, but but yeah, our let's... actual ratings on this movie, I'll leave to yeah. you for the um, critics. Okay, so IMDb gave this movie a 7.1 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 68%. TV... No, no, too low. <laughs> TV Guide gave it 66%. Who? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Um... And 85% of Google users liked this movie. Yeah. The two 60% ones, way too low. I think the 7.1 is a pretty fair, just a little bit low score. Because I, I do feel like this movie is probably in the 7s range. Yeah, on, yeah, I was about to give it like an 8. Then I, I think I reeled my you know thoughts and like is it really worth it no great movie for what it is but yeah going into this movie i was expecting to like rate it somewhere in the eights um but then there were just so many jokes that did not land for me that mm -hmm. i started more considering a seven rating somewhere so in the sevens i definitely want to give it a high seven 
And I have I have to give it the meme number. God damn it. This movie in effect has too much water. You have to say the the score. Yes, it's 7.8. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm going to give this movie a 7.4. Perfectly reasonable. And with that... Yeah, and with that, you can join us tomorrow for Phineas and Ferb Across the Second Dimension. Lily and I will be recording that tomorrow. So, fun. Okay, that's Um, kind of weird. That we're having two TV movie specials back to back imagine if tomorrow we spin the wheel and it lands on regular movie i'll find the nearest table to flip you will not flip a table i will i'll flip a table after the podcast no you won't make me but But anyway, you can join us tomorrow for Phineas and Ferb Across the Second Dimension. And next week, you can join us for something that you can find out about tomorrow and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. But with all that being said, I've been Avery. That's been Lily. And you understand it,